Lovely. Lovely. Cheers. Bye. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. I've got an unconscious gentleman. He has severe traumatic brain injury. King's College Hospital, London. I think something hurt. One of the busiest A&E departments in the country. They'll be busy right now. Yeah, you know, 15 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes. King's is extreme, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> A place where love, life and death... <laughs> unfold every single day. Fall from a tree is probably absolutely trolled. I'm very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking I'm not going to cope. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department <gasps> in just one 24-hour period. Kavina. Everyone should walk through an emergency room at least once in their life because it makes you realise what your priorities are. It's not the rush, rush, rush and the money, money, money. It's the people you love and the fact that one minute they might be there and one minute they might be gone. Hospital is regarded as one of the best at dealing with issues relating to the brain and mind. Shut up! You know nothing of pain! Shut up! Johnny, Johnny, <coughs> behave yourself. Slurred speech. As a result, the A&E department handles more neurological and psychological emergencies than any other in the country. There's yeah, there's a strike, yeah. The unpredictability of what can happen with the brain and the mind is the scary thing, you know, and it's, you know, it's, and it's hard to fix, and it's hard to understand. Um, all right. Hello, Mr Thomas, is it? What is it that's brought you to hospital? I did this morning call uh, Dora Telephone. Sorry, excuse me. Um, I'm just going to go and answer that. Let's just pop you up on this bed. Are you right if just I give you a hand to stand up? Okay, no. My nickname used to, I used to be called the Memory Man. You're right. I've always had the ability to remember, you know, Grand National winners, Derby winners. There's another one for you on your list. The gentleman in 11, okay. he's actually a query stroke. Oh, OK, thanks. 61-year-old Clive is a former betting shop manager. Somebody the other day uh, asked me, um, uh, what was the name of the horse that won the 1961 Grand National? I can't remember. I said it was Nicholas Silver, which was a grey horse, and that won the Grand National in 1961. Hold your hands out nice and high for me and just keep them up like that. Yeah. And then just stop me pushing them down. OK, that's good. All right, that's fine. Just relax. Give my fingers a really big squeeze. Good. Relax and just look at me. On the particular day, Oops. I woke up Sorry. very, very confused. Raise your eyebrows up. Like this? No. When my wife woke up and we started speaking, um, she sent, said to me, what's the matter with your voice? Got a big smile, show me your teeth. And she said, it sounds like, like you've been drinking, I, I, which I hadn't. Yeah. That's it. Can you feel me touching? Yeah. Does it feel the same on both sides? Uh, <coughs> yes. Okay. All right, then. Well, well one thing, I, I must make one comment. You, you look, look very young to be a consultant. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. That's all right. <laughs> That's obviously just my parents' good genes, maybe. Otherwise, maybe your vision is blurry. I'm going to leave you in the hands of the nurse. We're going to put a drip in your hand and I'm going to come back and I'll probably bring one of our stroke doctors back as well to have a chat to you and organise a scan and a few other tests, OK? OK, Jackie. Thank, thank you. Thank I think I need CG and stuff as well. Thank you very okay. much. My name is Tommy. I was run over by a taxi on Friday. I've got a very big cut here, da da da. Oh, pardon me. Just go on like this all day long, do you suppose? Eh? Just go on like this all day long for like 24 hours. This A and E. Who's that? It's this A and E. Would it be 24 hours? I would have thought so. Yeah. Do they? I mean, do they come here for all sorts of A and E stuff? Yeah. <laughs> She gave that one a squish and she said something about a fracture or something about needing to be seen. 26-year-old Jodie's evening plans have been cut short. She's trapped her hand in a collapsible chair. That's the word that I was thinking, you know, when you, I said it, it, um, he said a posh word, not a posh word, but a technical word or something that I didn't know what it meant. Do you know what a triage is? Fell a tree. The triage. It means, I know what it means. <laughs> When me and Petra were grape picking, we had to do le triage, which is when you separate the bad grapes from the um, good grapes. So what it means is that like a, a separating, like a kind of filtering process of like what's important and what's not. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, triage just means sorting. <clears throat> well, isn't what's, what's the horse's thing? Dressage. Dress <laughs> totally different. <laughs> <laughs> totally different. <laughs> Dressage. Oh, I can't believe I'm missing this concert. I thought I would have got there. Have you ever been to A&E before? Yeah. They won't let us out for a while, though. When you're in A&E, you, you don't know who your patients are, gonna, you know, who they're going to be today. Here's A&E, can I help you? You've just got to be prepared for anything. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> Can you put out a stroke call for any resus now? A 16-year-old query stroke. 16-year-old query stroke. stroke? Yeah. This chap here. 16? 16. One six. Impressions stroke. <laughs> Graham, the 16-year-old apparently they've just pulled up outside. Query stroke sketched by neurosurgeons. One six, impression is stroke. I got a call from the school to say there's been an accident um, involving one of my son, it's Joseph. And at first I thought it maybe it was something minor, like a, a little cut in there and there, and they said no, it was quite a big one. All they knew was he was lying on the floor motionless. And Elijah kneeling beside him, calling him his name, Joseph, Joseph, are you all right? And he couldn't say anything. I just looked at him, like he was just sitting on the floor, head down. Uh, and I was, I was just, I was just mad, man. I was just angry. I just didn't know what to think. Just didn't know how to feel. I was just bare talking, bare talking, bare. Uh, nobody could talk to me. And like, yeah, I just, I just couldn't explain it. Like, just couldn't you know, put myself together like, to see what happened. I was just concerned about him. Like, uh, it was just a hard time, it was a hard time. We're going to go up here into four. I think he must have re regained his consciousness in the ambulance. As he said, the first thing he saw when he, when he came around was the, uh, the white, uh, the inside of the ambulance and some men talking over him. Did you find out exactly what happened? Where were you? What was your last subject? Where, where, where were you going? Did you actually play football today? Yeah. I was in goal. Huh? I, I don't know, you wasn't playing with me though. I was playing football today. Might have been yesterday. No, I came down from the cafe to, you were there. Hey, was you. That was yesterday. That was yesterday. Yeah. That was yesterday. Let me start from the beginning, yeah? Okay, fine. Okay. This morning I woke up around 
Seven. Seven? I think he went downstairs to bath. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what he took. Because what Okay, fine. This morning, um, what's it? He took my laces, right? The black ones, my black shoes. And that was yesterday, that was yesterday. Hmm? Joseph, I think you're talking about yesterday, not today. Because today, you actually woke up late. So you were talking about yesterday, Joe. Oh. You talk about yesterday. So maybe yesterday. Did you did you remember playing football with him yesterday? Yeah, yeah I was playing football with so him yesterday. Playing football yesterday. So, so maybe. I think I am talking about there? yesterday. You, you talk about yesterday. You were talking about yesterday. Because I don't remember putting on my white cardigan. You didn't remember putting on what? My white cardigan. My white, white jumper. White cardigan. Oh, the jumper. You didn't. I don't remember, remember putting that on. So I don't remember what happened today. Yes, you need to find out exactly what happened. Where were you? What was your last subject? Where where, where were you going? A stroke means a blood vessel supplying a part of the brain gets blocked. As a result, that part of the brain loses its function. Hello, hello. Very young people uh, can have a severe disability from stroke. Yeah, that's it. Hi, lovey. We're off to seat. They have a huge swelling um, from the stroke if it's not treated appropriately and can kill them very rapidly. Having been assessed, Clive is waiting to find out the cause of his speech problems. It's gonna sting a bit, but try and keep your arm nice and still for me if you can. Okay. We don't want you to escape. We put on your name tag quite tight. If you want me to escape, I wouldn't try and do that. <laughs> do you ever get people leave here during yes. examinations? Yes. You do, from time to time. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see the point in that. Sometimes people get a bit scared. Do they? Yeah. Oh. They feel they don't want to stay and find out what was wrong with them. Really? Mm. Well, if, if anything is wrong with me, I, I, I'm one of those who doesn't want to know, I'd like to know. Yeah, it's best to know. Right. I've known people that have had strokes and the quality of life just goes out the window and they become very reliant uh, on having to have constant help. How does that make you feel when you...? I'm very annoyed. You like to be in control? Absolutely, yeah. Sorry, I'm just putting this back up again. OK. Thank you, Charmin. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. I, I, I become very uh, anxious and depressed uh, when things don't go, you know, right for me. I am on um, antidepressants. I've been on the five or six years I've been uh, using those. I'm not the same person. People have said that I'm not the same person. Mm -hmm. Um, that I was sort of 10 years ago, when I was full of confidence and... Uh, but it's this... Um, this depression is uh, pretty bad. It's... Uh, it's, it's something that... Um, some days are worse than others. You get the occasional good day, but you get more bad days than good days. Sometimes I think, you know, should I go back to work or try? But I, I, I don't think I'd, I could do it. In fact, I know I couldn't do it. And that's all because of what's going on in yeah, What's going upstairs, yeah, yeah. That's right. incredibly pert type of and then literally you'll be in like a queue for a pizza 
in a pizza takeaway shop and you'll suddenly realise, like, you'll look at all the men and they'll actually... They're all actually all staring at her. Oh. And you don't realise the power of a bum, really. Like, I'm, I'm quite... I'm thinking sometimes, you know, they must be looking at something else, but they quite literally are. Or you'll be in a bar, because, obviously, when you're drinking with someone, you're face fit, so all you can see is all of these eyes behind her. You're talking to her, and all you can see is all of these eyes. Looking at her bum. And a bum. That's And you would never beautiful. know that people were so obsessed with them. How can I help you? Hi. Um, could we? Could you ask someone to do a welfare check on someone who's gone missing from the department? She's not under any section. She's an informal person who uh, says she's suicidal, and she has a history of 74 previous suicide attempts. Jenny is a psychiatric nurse. She's worked at King's for three years. I started off as a police officer and then I went into a women's prison and worked with uh, drug rehabilitation. Hello, Kirsty, it's Jenny here. I'm one of the psychiatric nurses in A&E at King's. I'm trying to find your mum because your mum was brought in, but I went out to see her and she'd already disappeared. Also been a dirty phone line operator. So I don't think you can look at someone and see the whole package. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's a, big, a big learning curve as to what men and the world's all about, I can assure you. <laughs> Different ends of the spectrum, I suppose. It's all, still all human behaviour. I know, you've had, a, you've had to put up with a lot over the years, haven't you? How many mental health patients do you see a month at King's? I think it's about 300 in a month. We see more people with mental health needs than, than any other A&E department throughout the UK. All right, my dear, try not to worry too much. Bye-bye, love. Did you see that when they brought me a cup of tea at about five o'clock in the morning, she got up to try and go, and I said to her, look, I've sat with you all night now. Would you just let me have this cup of tea before you try and gouge your eyes out or run away again? So she sat down and let me drink my cup of tea, and then she started gouging her eyes out as soon as I'd finished it. <laughs> I was quite grateful to her, though. A lot of people would love to come into the care of mental health services by being in hospital. It's certainly very busy at night time, very, very busy, and I think sometimes that's because there is nowhere else to go. It can seem an awful long time between drawing the curtains at five o'clock when it gets dark to waking up the next morning. A regular visitor to King's has arrived. He has schizophrenia and is well known to the mental health team. This time his problem is a medical one. He hasn't taken his diabetes medicine for the last four days. Yeah, I think it's... So have you not been taking your insulin, huh? For four days. For four days, why is that? I don't know, I've time. You haven't had time? No. You need to make the time for that kind of thing. Yeah. It's really, really important. And discharged on the 11th of November, admitted them for chest pain and hyperglycemia, uh, poor compliance. He's coming with the same thing again today. Excuse me. Hello. When? No, oh, not for a little while, unfortunately. Yeah, at least. If not, if not a lot longer than that, maybe not even overnight. Because we need to get your sugar down and we're worried about your heart at the moment. I know, but we're worried about your heart as well. I know. I don't, I don't doubt it, but it's, it's more about we need to keep a good close eye on you and having a cigarette ain't going to help. We see a lot of people who have schizophrenia. We see a lot of people with bipolar disorders, mainly when they're in their manic phase, um, so their behaviour is very outlandish, especially if it leads to disinhibited behaviours. Hello. I don't think I don't think you should have a cigarette, sir. We can't change the drip. I don't think it's very wise, sir. If you're behaving abnormally, it doesn't make you the best company generally. So it's, it's a very difficult thing to deal with. Doctor. Doctor. Yes, it does. I've already spoken to me. I'm going to go and get you that cup of tea, all right? And a sandwich. That I'll have to do for now. I'm going to go right now. <laughs> Thank 
You can't go out for a cigarette just yet. You're having some medication, which you need to have, OK? You're too sick to go out for a cigarette at the moment. And there's no one to take you out for a cigarette. My colleague's already told you. Hey, have this instead, right? You got it? Two of them there, yeah? And don't forget the cheese there as well. Your letter is going to be the letter B. When the marks get set, go. Burger. Bug. Blimey. Bug. I said. <laughs> Three. Borrow. Borage. Borage is not a word. Let's pick him up. Bell. Born. Bean born. Stop. That is 25. Jodie, you've got 25. 34 is a record, 25 is pretty. OK, I'm going to give you S, go. Sugar. Sweet. Are you Cinch. counting yourself? Synchronised. Snitch. Snatch. Shalom. <laughs> I think an A&E department deals with people in every aspect, not only with the broken bones and the cut finger and the um, dodgy ticker. I think that... It's a place that people see as safe. I haven't received the scan results yet. That's the machine, the machinery. It's a place where they can come when things are out of control and they need somebody to look after them. The diabetes patient will have to spend the next four hours attached to a drip. He's a regular to King's, well known to the mental health team. Tonight's visit is his 19th in the past year. Now, we're just going to move you around the corner. Okay. Okay? All right. Before you ask, can't go for a cigarette. All right. I know that's what you're thinking. All right. Let's go for a cigarette. <laughs> Hey there. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, what timing. Three lovely legs. <laughs> no, I will show my bag, please. Yep. He lives in a council property with support from regular carers. He challenges this by some of his behaviour. He can not be very welcoming at times, let's say. I've got your clothes in there anyway. Well, I've got my money, my phone. I love it, I love There are times when he can't contain life at home like that anymore. Come on. Blue plastic bags, isn't it? <coughs> the basis of that is loneliness. Some of that loneliness may be caused by that behaviour which challenges social relationships. Come on, hurry up! Hurry up! Oh, fuck it all. Oh, fuck it all. Nurse! 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 
Раз, 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 we're busy, okay? What do you want? Oh, a cigarette. You, how many times have we been through this? You can't have a cigarette. Uh -huh. It ain't happening. You can ask as much as you want, the answer will still be no. Yes, yes. Right, you see this? You're attached to this machine, which is keeping your blood sugars from making you collapse. Right? Oh, my will tell you. No, you're too unwell this time. My will tell you, yeah. No, you're not wheeling yourself out. My will tell you. No. No. You're too unwell. You're not going for a cigarette, okay? Don't ask again because the answer will still be no. OK? And don't shout out nurse for at least another 10 minutes. OK? Is there anything you're going to need in the next 10 minutes? Good. I don't want to hear it, because no one will come calling. OK? Right. <clears throat> yeah. I can lift this one up, but not this one as much. I can't bend it. 16 year old Joseph has been brought to King's because paramedics believe he may have suffered a stroke. He and his twin brother Elijah have been in A&E for the last two hours. They're waiting for his brain scan results to come back. Just don't, don't go straight into football. I'm not. Don't go straight into football. First, I want to just sit down and just Rest, watch like, first. And just like a gradually build up, maybe just... just I'm not going to go, I'm not go straight into football. I'm just going to let Obviously, practice just, catching the ball just first. Just try and walk, walk it off and walk it off and then start jogging. After you jog, you can now sprint in that. Most of the time, I think they can't wait to kill each other. That's the way I can describe it. But when I saw him that day genuinely, I thought, oh my God. You know, we love this boy. His brother loves him. So yeah, and I'm praying in my heart that God, please, this boy, he doesn't want to lose his brother. You say A, I say A, you say B, I say B. You say C, I say C. And on and on and on. All right, yeah. Yeah, famous people, yeah. Famous people. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Is that the first time you've had to think about what life would be like without your brother? Yeah, oh, yeah. Relax. 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 I just wanted them out there, you know what I mean? Just wanted them just back the way it was normal, like. Zed. Oh, right. Zed. I'm yeah. ending, I'm ending. Zed. Oh, no, I, I, wait, I'm wait, ending, wait, wait, I'm wait, ending it. So you say, saying it? You said um, what? Wait, let me see, let me see. Wait, wait, I haven't said mine yet. Um, Come on, just say it, Zoo. Just say Zoo. Just, just say Zoo. Uh, zoo. Fine, let me end it. How many letters left? Zero. <sighs> Oh, yeah, zero. No, it was good, you know? Zero. Imagine. No. And he still got the question like zero. You got that to recover. Oh, fine, OK, cool. Get left hand, get away. Don't put it Put it now. Put it down. Rest it, rest it, rest it. Heart rate, heart rate, rest it. So now, this is how we go fast, and it will go smash your head. Magic, this one, this one. Safe. Attitude. Joseph, if we're going to the ward shortly, OK. OK, ward. Are we going to ward shortly? Yeah. Which word are we going? Friend stroke unit. Friend? Friend stroke unit. Friend stroke unit. Yeah. OK. Thank you. One of the last three friend stroke units. Mm. Wow, I had stroke. OK, she. Nobody wants to say the word stroke. <laughs> and, and I'm trying not to say the word stroke to myself as well. And we try not to tell Joseph that this is what he say might be. We're thinking that, OK, you have a weakness. So, so I like to think that it's a weakness on one side of your body. And we think that you might pull through. And I'm trying to prepare him to say, just in case you can't pull through, what do you think will happen? 
how will you react to it? And he said, Mom, are you scared? And I say, I am very scared. Right, we're going to take you upstairs now. He was the youngest on the ward, on the stroke ward that night. It's scary. Every time you went on the wall to look at him, you're meeting all these old people. And then he's like, oh my God, what is he doing here? He shouldn't be here. He doesn't belong to be here. Sixty-one year old Clive is also waiting to find out whether he's had a stroke. Hello. Um, my name is Kumar, one of the registrars. How are you? I'm all right. Mm. My wife noticed this morning. Mm. I'm not as articulate mm. word wise. And how I'm long normally. do you think this has been going on? This is since last night. Last night. Can you look at me? Look at this. Can you follow this for me? Dear me. Look at me. Tell me which finger moves. Keep looking at my eyes. Yeah, tell me which finger moves. Can you see this finger moving? Right. Yeah, which one? Okay. Point with your hand, which fingers are moving? The four, yeah. four no? three. Okay. Can you feel me touching here? Yes. Is it equal both sides? Yeah. Can you raise your eyebrows? Close your eyes very tight. Tight, tight, tight. Keep your lips very tight. Can you turn your head that side for me? Yes. So what other medical problem do you have? I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. I've been absent three weeks today. Okay. Can you put your hand out straight for me? Open your eyes for me. Put your hand out straight. Good. Now close your eyes. Good. When did you start drinking? I, I started drinking when I was 12 years old. And do you have any other medical problems at all? High blood pressure, diabetes, anything like that? No, I'm, I'm on antidepressants. Antidepressants. Oh. Use this index finger, touch your nose for me. A, a friend of mine, uh, his father had a pub in Highgate Village. We started helping ourselves to the drink. That, that's how it basically all started. Plus some um, alcoholism runs in my family. So you are an alcoholic? I'm an alcoholic. I always will be an alcoholic. Can you do this? Yeah. Okay. How, how much were you drinking then when you were in the height of it? Between uh, eight and ten pints of Guinness and probably about half a bottle of whiskey a day. OK, how many fingers can you see? Eight. Huh? Eight. Eight? Eight and two, th and two thumbs. Eight and two thumbs. Okay, that's ten. Good. Okay, that's more. Used to go to work. Oh yeah, I, that never affected my work. My father was an alcoholic, and he used to say to me, "The day you can't go to work because you're hungover, stop drinking." Uh, and I, I never missed work due to uh, alcohol. Okay. Can you bend your head? Okay, no, manage yourself. That's good. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll see you with the scan results, okay? Okay, so th thank you very much. Okay. Okay, then, darling. Um, that's fine. Okay, darling. So, put this one on. What's your name, darling? Capri. Capri. Mm -hmm. I've got nothing. I like to know people's names. Yeah, that's good. Yes, I don't... Obviously, you want to know who's, um, who's looking after you, don't you? Alcoholics are susceptible stroke to stroke by various, you know, risk. You know, they can have very high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and also they might have other medical illness like uh, alcoholic cardiomyopathy where um, that they might develop irregular heartbeat. As a result of it, they throw up clots to the brain. So uh, we have a very close eye on people with uh, alcohol uh, over usage when they come into a hospital with a stroke. Is it fair to say your brain is now kind of your enemy? Uh, oh, you could say that, yeah. Yeah, you could say that. Because, you know, as, and then the brain triggers you, 
you know, says go to the pub. That's, that's what triggers it all. If there's a storm out at sea, you go into harbour just to anchor you down while the storm's passing. And I think that if that weren't there, you're tossing around in the water on your own and you're likely to sink. And so we just have to be that hard place you can tie yourself onto for a little bit so you can get to the other side. Alongside all the injuries and illnesses seen in A&E, King's also opens its doors to people who are emotionally troubled. I'm Jenny, I'm one of the psychiatric nurses in the team. A young girl has arrived, in crisis and struggling to cope. Before, actually, before we go any further, where's Baby? She's my friend. Yeah? It's like, whenever I feel depressed, I leave with the friend that I can trust. It's like, right. I don't know, it's like I'm getting ready to say bye to her. If right. you get what I mean. Yeah. How, how are you finding it, being a mum on your own? It's hard. <laughs> it is <All> hard. Right. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm never making the right choices. Well, I don't know. I don't know that. No, I, I know it's difficult. I feel like I'm a bad mum because I like I let her see me getting treated horrible by men. She was sleeping, but she had her hands over her ears, and my friend asked her, "Why do you keep doing that?" And she said, "Cause of um, mummy." Like she's singing "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star," and she's saying, "Cause of keep arguing." It made me feel sad that my daughter's having to do that. But no one's dead, no one's arguing no more. But even to her, let's do that. boyfriend. Yeah. And when she found out we was moving, she was in the car and she was like, we're going to have a fresh start now, mummy. Things that she shouldn't be saying. She's only three. I feel bad. I really do. Some nights we see one or two, but it's not unusual to see somebody most nights of the week now, children. And I'm talking about children, I'm not talking about teenagers. Mm. Suicide attempts, all sorts of things. So how old is the youngest suicide or suicide attempt or someone with suicide tendencies that you've heard of? In the department, about seven, I think. Ready, steady, pee. 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 Perceptive, pink, prize, prize winning, poodle. Prize winning, you can't have two words. Yes, I can, it's one word. Prince, princess, posh, pickle, um, printing, press, purple. <laughs> um, <laughs> Porthole. Paddle. Oh! Parrot. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. How many? 25. Sorry, mate, I put you to face by one. Did I not get 25? You got 24. So I I'm going to really concentrate this time. I'm not even going to look at you. This is going to be like... This is going to be it. This is, this is my big time. Miss Garrod. Oh, God. Miss Garrod? Judy. Yeah. Yes. Hello, come here. Come with me. Okay. Right. So I can do your dresses or you can go home. What have you done? I trapped my finger. <laughs> oh my goodness. In a collapsible steel. Oh dear. Rest your hands on mine. It can be very addictive receiving care. I've had a problem with my heart at one stage. And you go, you get taken into a hospital and there are nurses who talk kindly to you. They give you their full attention. They look after you and they get you to a better place where your heart's OK and you can go home. But if you need to do that because it's about your personality or your mental health or your mood, you become a revolving door patient because it's actually quite nice to come and receive some care. Hi, 
Hiya. How are things? I'm, I, how, I'm from the psychiatric team. Yeah. How, how have things been at home recently? Oh, really, really horrendous. Have they? Really horrendous. Yeah. What's What's been happening? I can't cope. You know, I can't go myself. I'd like to go to the hospital. Yeah, I know, but nobody can live in hospital forever, can they? Sort of, sort of get me somewhere better to live. Well, what's wrong with where you live? I can't get out of there. I can't look out of myself. I want to go back to the hospital, please. Well, at the moment, you're not very well because you haven't been... You've taken your diabetic medication properly. Yeah. And they're trying to see what's been happening with your chest today. Yeah. While you're here, we, the psychiatric liaison team will come and see you and see what's happening for you. Thank you. All right? Thank you. So, we want to make sure all of you's all right. Mental health doesn't make you the most popular person to be with. It's, it's the knock-on effect on where he fits into the world and where he's comfortable in the world. Because his life is alone and is lonely. And it's those things that he wants us to fill in for him. And with the best will in the world, you can't medicate for loneliness. Is there anything in particular that's distressing you at the moment? Uh, everything. Everything? OK. We are all as vulnerable as each other, and anything can happen to any one of us and just trip us over into mental health, and it's a hard place to get back from. Well, you need, to, you need to relax. You're a safe place at the moment. For some of us, life's going to be OK. And for some of us, it can change dramatically without any warning. And I think, I think that's very scary. One in four of us will, at some point in our life, suffer from mental illness. I've got a very lovely and understanding wife. Um, I mean, many people would have left me years ago. The brain scan results for former betting shop manager Clive are inconclusive. But because of his history as an alcoholic, he's being kept in overnight. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Right. What are your odds? The odds of me keeping sane are evens. That's 50-50, either way. What about your odds of staying dry? Odds of staying dry? Uh, well, that's, that should be an odds-on chance, but it's not. Over what sort of period? Forever. The odds of me staying dry forever. Probably 100 to 1. Probably.
勁犀利。<笑>